Welcome to the little chapel here at Glen. Today I want to get into some light physics and talk about the length of organ pipes and how they relate to the sound they produce. Many times you'll hear us organists talk about the eight foot or the two foot or the one and three fifths or the 16 foot and I want to clarify what the numbers actually mean. When we talk about the pipe being a certain length, that measurement refers to approximately how big the pipe is for the lowest note on the keyboard, bottom C. So if we're talking about eight foot pipes, which is sort of our standard ordinary pitch, that means that the lowest note, bottom C, is produced by a pipe that's approximately eight feet long. And I know you can't see it, but you have to trust me, it's back there. And so the lowest one is eight feet long, and all the other pipes as you go up in that rank will be progressively shorter proportionally. Um, and that was our open diapason eight foot. Um, oftentimes you'll hear people talking about concert pitch being A440. And what that means is the notes, the A above the middle C is sounding at 440 hertz. That's the frequency of the sound wave. So if eight feet pipes are our default pitch level, the four foot pipe, because it's smaller, will produce a higher frequency sound wave, and the pitch that sounds will be an octave higher than the equivalent sound made by an eight foot pipe. Four is half of eight, and so it's an octave higher. I know this is a lot to take in. Let's see if I can demonstrate. If I play these notes on an eight foot scale, compare that to on a four foot scale. It's higher. The proportions here work the same way as the pipes get shorter or as they get longer. So a two foot pipe is going to be an octave higher than the four foot, and two octaves higher than the eight foot, which is our standard pitch. And again, two foot means that in the rank or the collection of pipes associated with that stop, the two foot stop, the lowest C is going to be produced by a pipe that's about two feet long. And this works the other direction too. If we play a 16 foot stop or a 32 foot stop, again, we're doubling the lengths. So because of how physics works, those pitches will be sounding an octave or two octaves respectively lower than our eight foot standard pitch. Hope you're with me so far. Now sometimes you get stops that aren't cleanly an octave apart. They're not a multiple of eight, whether it's half a fraction or a multiple. And so we call these mutation stops. So instead of being in unison, so when I play this note, you're gonna hear a whole bunch of different C's playing. But a mutation stop would not play a C, it would play a different note. So um, a mutation stop here on the organ is a twelfth, which is two and two thirds, meaning again, the bottom C is produced by a pipe two and two thirds feet long. Now you're expecting to hear a C, but here's what happens. That note is actually an octave plus a fifth higher than the C we might expect with an eight foot pitch. So that's called a twelfth, an octave plus fifth is the same as a twelfth. Uh, and so it's really playing a G, but up an octave. You'll also see pipe lengths of one and one thirds, which is half of two and two thirds, and therefore an octave higher still. Sometimes you see one and three fifths, which up from standard pitch will play two octaves plus a third. And there are other mutation stops out there too, so you have to kind of know your fractions when you're an organist. Mutation stops provide an extra layer of depth to the sound. If you watched my other video, you might recall I described the cornet sound. Um, if you remember, I added all those different separate stops together, eight, four, two and two thirds, two, and one and three fifths, and that final product sort of had a completely new personality. Now, this was a lot of talking for me. Thanks for your attention. <laughs> so I'll let you meditate on all of that while I play a little piece here that uses different pipe lengths. This is the Canzona in G minor by Domenico Zuppoli, and it's in three sections. In the first section, I'm going to only play on the eight foot stop, the R open diapason. For the middle section, you'll see I add the four foot stop, so you're going to hear eight foot pitch and four foot pitch up an octave. And for the final section, I'm going to add the two foot stop. So by the end of the piece, you'll have eight, four, and two, 
which means when I play down one note, three pipes are sounding because each time I pull out a stop, that's engaging another set of pipes. So what that means, for the end of the piece, eight, four, and two, it's going to be a very bright sound. I really hope this made sense. If not, feel free to grab me after church one day and ask for another explanation. Uh, but please enjoy the Canzona and G minor by Cipollini.